Cockroaches have been around for a very long time, over 300 million years to be exact, and they haven't changed much in all those years. Today, there are more than 4,500 species of cockroach around the world, and only 1% of those species ever interact with humans. This 1% gives the rest of the cockroach species a very bad reputation. Due to the misunderstood nature of these insects, most people never think of one as a pet. But these low-maintenance animals make incredible and fascinating additions to your family. Hey, what is up, you guys? My name is Tatiana. You're watching Tatiana Tiny Zoo. And today we're going to be talking about a really amazing insect, truly one of my favorite invertebrates, and that is the Madagascar hissing cockroach. By the end of this video, you should know more about them. And you'll know all about their care so that you can decide if the Madagascar hissing cockroach is the right pet invertebrate for you. Gramphaterhina portentosa is a species of cockroach native to the island of Madagascar. There are about 20 varieties of hissing cockroach found on the island, though the Madagascar hissing cockroach is the most famous. They're also known as simply hissers. These hissers are one of the largest roach species on the planet. They can grow up to three inches long and one inch wide. These cockroaches are completely wingless, so they can't jump scare you, and they have a really hard armor-like exoskeleton. In fact, they feel kind of like plastic or wood when you touch them. The hissers I keep are actually the Halloween hisser, but this information will work for any of the 20 Madagascar species. In their native habitat, they live hiding in the leaf litter or rotting wood of the Madagascar forest floor. There, they forage for fallen fruit or decomposing leaves. When they want to hide, they'll find crevices in trees and under loose bark. I've noticed that these guys are mostly nocturnal. They definitely are out more after the lights in my reptile room get turned off, and they don't like direct sunlight. These roaches get their name from their ability to create a loud hissing sound. Let's listen. Most animals that hiss make the noise with their mouths but the Madagascar hissing roach actually forces air out of its body instead. This is because they have these breeding pores on the sides of their bodies called spiracles. These pores are mostly used for breathing, but the roaches also push air out of their abdomens and create the famous hiss. These roaches hiss for a number of different reasons, including when they're scared or startled, to attract a mate, and to ward off their competition. Speaking of competition, males are very territorial and they come equipped with these horns on the tops of their heads. They will use these horns to spar other males and defend their territories. If you're planning on keeping these guys as pets, keep an eye on the amount of males in your colony because too many will result in fighting and stress. Despite their creepy crawly appearance, their hissing and even their horns, hissing cockroaches aren't harmful or dangerous to humans. They are scavengers and don't hunt for their food, and their mouth parts are designed only for scraping and eating, not for biting. They are not considered a pest species like the American or German cockroach, and because they have specific temperature and humidity requirements, they cannot infest our homes. They eat mostly plant matter, they don't carry diseases, and they're actually very clean. These roaches actually spend quite a bit of time cleaning themselves, and they've actually developed a symbiotic relationship with a specific species of mite that lives on the roaches. These mites eat the old exoskeleton and any mold spores that might land on the hissers. Hey, have you learned something new during this video? Consider subscribing to my channel to learn more about unique and interesting animals every week. When it comes to keeping hissers as pets, your enclosure matters. These bugs have a specialized pad on each foot that makes them amazing climbers, and they can easily climb glass and plastic enclosures. Make sure your enclosure has a good lid with no gaps to prevent escapees. Even something that's a small gap is probably big enough for a roach to squeeze through it. Keep in mind that these roaches breed readily, with females giving birth to up to 50 nymphs at one time. These baby roaches are small, but they can still climb glass and squeeze through smaller gaps than their adult counterparts. Once you have your tank and a secure lid picked out, it's time to fill it up. These insects can live in a wide range of substrates, including soil, mulch, and eco-earth. Substrate helps keep the humidity up in your enclosure, plus hissers do burrow occasionally, so I recommend a solid few inches of whatever substrate you choose. Hissers love to explore their environment, and providing lots of hiding and climbing opportunities will let you see their most natural behaviors. Cork, wood, rocks, 
fake or live plants all add novelty to your habitat and create the perfect hiding spots for your new darkness loving friends. You can also use egg cartons or paper towel rolls as hiding and climbing opportunities for your roaches. Because these inverts naturally live under leaves and rotting wood, finishing the enclosure off with leaf litter is sure to make your roaches happy. Madagascar hissing cockroaches thrive at temperatures over 70 degrees. Any colder than that and you'll notice that they become pretty sluggish and they can eventually die. You might need a small heat mat or heat lamp depending on your room temperatures and definitely pay attention to the nighttime temps as well. They grow faster and reproduce more at temperatures between 80 and 85 degrees so you can raise or lower the temps depending on what you're looking for. Although the best way to avoid having too many offspring is to get a single roach or a colony of only females. If you have other exotic pets like reptiles or tarantulas, you can take your extra roaches and feed it off to your other pets as well. Madagascar hissing cockroaches don't need any lighting either, as you'll see them mostly in the dark. They will tolerate a day and night cycle if you have live plants in your enclosure, but it's best to keep them out of any direct sunlight. What they do need is higher humidity. Because they are native to the forests of Madagascar, their humidity requirements are higher than other inverts. I spray their substrate down several times a week, to make sure they're getting enough moisture as dehydration is often the most common cause of illness. As far as feeding goes, their diet needs are actually similar to most roaches and feeder insects. They are primarily vegetarian, although protein on occasion is good for them too. They will eat leafy greens, apples, carrots, bananas, peppers, really any sort of vegetable scrap you can offer them. Every few weeks, I'll offer them a bit of protein in the form of a few dog or cat kibbles. I don't do this all the time, but it's good for them in small amounts. I feed these guys at night, kind of the last thing I do before going to bed, and then everything that's not eaten by the next morning or within two days, I remove. Some sources say that in the wild, these guys can live up to 10 years, but I don't know how true that is because they're actually not very well studied. In captivity, they live between three to five years. Keeping your enclosure clean, feeding a varied diet, and maintaining the proper temperature and humidity levels are the best ways to ensure a long and happy cockroach life. Finally, proper handling to avoid any injuries is key to keeping your pet healthy for a long time. Hissing cockroaches aren't very fragile creatures. Their hard exoskeleton allows them to survive falls of several feet, and they can actually withstand 10 times the radiation that a human can. But just because nothing short of the next apocalypse might kill a hisser, doesn't mean you can't hurt one by accident. If you want to pick a hissing roach up, remember to never lift it by its legs or antenna and don't rip it away from the surface it's sitting on. Their legs have these sticky spikes all over them and that just helps them for traction. They don't hurt to touch or when they're climbing on you, but it makes their feet extra grippy and pulling them off of something too quickly might result in a missing leg. Just like most animals, these guys can get used to handling and they react better to it over time. I use them in my educational programming and the kiddos love touching them and sometimes getting a chance to hold them as well. Overall, I think Madagascar hissing cockroaches make the ideal pet for young kids, people who are interested in invertebrates, or anyone that wants an easy and low maintenance pet. You can give these guys a large bioactive habitat and really bring a slice of nature into your own home. I also think they would make a really cool learning opportunity as a class pet. You can tie them into lessons about life cycles, invertebrates, and decomposers. And like I already mentioned, these roaches accompany me to my wildlife programs and the kids are just fascinated by them. What do you think? Would you consider a cockroach a pet? What about things like ant farms and isopods? Let me know in the comments below. Can you see Eponine's face behind me? Oh, the box oh bummer. <laughs> if this video helped you set up your hisser enclosure, consider subscribing to my channel. As always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Can you come back this way? Come back. No, you can hiss at me all you want, but come back this way. Okay, well, he's just gonna stay. Maybe that could be my, um my little next video recommendation screen.